welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we're looking at this, which is an idea I had from when I went to Venice and I saw something like this. This is using wire wool, which is sandwiched between two pieces of glass to create these kind of organic textural feeling pieces where the wire wool, and in this case is the mountains in the background, or in this case is the wave, or we've done trees, and using that on a tap fuse with some other marini and I, I, um, items to make this project and I'm looking forward to showing you this today. So what you're going to need for this project is some um, wire wool um, and I just bought this at probably Amazon where I buy most things but I've had it for a while um, and you need to you know take a little bit. Now I already cut my glass but actually it would be better if I'd made my tree and then cut my glass to fit it and then effectively what you're doing is you're taking your wire wool and you want to sort of tweeze it into a shape of a tree um, now, you don't want to use too much because every time I've done this pro project, I've ended up with problems with bubbles. Um, but I've always done it with a full fuse. Now, we're going to try it this time on a tack fuse and see if we can get it to not have the problems with bubbles if it's on a tack fuse. So, you can see here's one I've also already kind of done and got it into a shape of a tree. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's sort of a wonderful, wild, and um, crazy shaped trees you can get. So, you know, this one's more got branches, whereas this one I might just try and do more of a thicker trunk and like this. So, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue to help hold it in place. The tree goes on the glass like so. So you need some small pieces of glass to put in the corners. We will then do a two-hour bubble squeeze on this, which will, this will hold the glass up at the edge, hopefully giving time for all the bubbles to move out before, um, before the glass kind of closes in on itself. Um, good thing to know about this, this is a great project to do with float glass, guys. So you float people out there, this works particularly well because float glass is that much stiffer. Um, and it just sort of works really well. So, yeah, little pieces in the corners. That goes on top. I'm just going to put some extra dobs of, dobs, dollops of glue here. And then the nice thing is you can just decorate the tree with some frit or marini. So I'm just going to use some marini. This is our... Stripe sunset flower. I'm going to put some leaves on as well. So I also want to put sort of some, you know, like down the bottom, so it's like, you know, leaves have blown off and I can even use some um, that are not cut so well. I've got some scrap bits of leaves in the pot here that I'm happy to use. Like a strong spring wind has blown a few off. Um, I've also got a stand and I'm going to decorate the stand. I'm going to use a little bit of frit now as well. Just um, <coughs> just it's the sort of t extra texture of having some different sized pieces is nice. And also use some frit on the stand. I like to use different coloured frits and different grades. So I've got some orange, and also some tangerine orange. Which is 
striper so it looks really dark but actually fires a bit lighter. And I'm probably going to try and keep the area in the middle kind of more freer for it and have it either in the tree or on the ground. Same with the stand, I need to make sure I have an area free in the middle to glue the upright of glass too. I'm going to put some leaves and flowers on the stand as well. So it's like that, and then it can just go in the kiln. It doesn't take very much glass, this. This is the nice thing about it. It can go in the, um, the kiln. Um, it's quite hard to see on, on this surface, the kind of tree, because the, we've got the dark background. We'll show it on a white background um, for the next one. Um, and then they just go in on a tack fuse with a long um, uh, bubble squeeze, and we can see how it looks when it comes out. next project I had an idea with this was to do something with seas. So I've created this um, uh, wave out of the, the metal and I'm going to put, with this one I'm actually going to put some powders on the bottom layer. So I think there's a slightly stormy feeling so I'm going to start off, in fact I'm going to start off with some light blue, light sky blue. So this is the kind of sky. And remember, if you want colour, you have to put a fair amount of powder down, otherwise you're not going to see it. So that's my... I mean, I don't matter. It's, this is going to be draped. I'm um, not draped, but it will be draped, sort of um, bent over a lamp bender. So it's... Um, I don't need it to be massively... Um, rich in colour because I want some light to come through. Now I'm using light sign which is effectively going to look like the, the sea below. And then I'm using some mink opals which is sort of a brownie, pinky colour to be the kind of rocks, rocky area at the bottom. I could have used French vanilla here, but I was worried about the French vanilla reacting with a light cyan, which I didn't really want. So I would rather do it like that. Now, looking at it, I've gone a bit high with the mink into the light cyan. So I'm just going to go back over and do a bit more light cyan over the top to make the mink area a bit smaller. Um, now I'm going to put my wave on where I sort of feel my wave is going, which is kind of there. Now I might just put a bit more light sky in areas where I feel maybe there's a bit too much cyan. And then I also want to, because I feel this is stormy, I want to do some midnight blue, which is sort of dark up in the kind of top to give it a bit more of a stormy feel to it but I'm pretty much keeping this round the top of the picture in a light area so then I'm going to put my top layer which I've managed to get some dust on on top like so oh no I need to put my little bits of my spaces to make sure there's room for the air to get out I'm putting six because this is a slightly longer piece put this in. Now I'm going to now decorate the top. So I want to make this sort of feel like this is um, the, you know the rocks are over here that perhaps the waves are breaking onto.
Now I'm also going to add some mink, which is the colour of the, the powder I used below. So it kind of blends together. And also I'm using the extra large um, brown and white variegated. So this is then coarse, which is a slightly smaller. I also like to add a little bit of green. To, you know, most sea bottoms have a little bit of green here and there. And put some of that in like so. I'm just gonna use my fingers to bring it down so it's not above the sea level. watch it it's a little bit I haven't glued the top to the bottom there so it will want to move um, I'm gonna also add on top a bit of glue first the idea of you know foamy white waves Resting. Again, using my fingers to sort of put this in place where I want it. I don't mind if there's a little bit of kind of spray coming off. It can feel like spray. I can see a dot of green though, and I definitely don't want that in waves. Um, so like that. And now I'm going to add some of our fish marini. So. Shells. I might add a turtle a little further out to sea. Add some little goldfish. I don't want to add a massive amount. Fish all swimming in one direction. Well, he's too big. Some of these little harlequin fish, I'm putting the little ones. Right way up. I'm using the kind of smaller fish here. And so I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty pleased with that. I don't think it needs much more. I might add another shell kind of close to the surface, but I'm going to leave it like that and it can go in the kiln and we'll see how this one comes out. So this one is like, um, we wanted to do, I wanted to do kind of a Welsh um, sort of slate mountain feel. Um, so I've made this, which is like a kind of, um, like kind of in my head, it's like slate mountains. Um, and I need to kind of put above the mountain range, I want to put some sky. So I'm going to put powder down. Guys, remember wearing powder, wear a mask. And I'm kind of looking at the thing above and going, you know, I want it, you know, I need more blue down here because it goes, goes down. And, um, you know, pretty good layer of powder, as you know. You know, the powder dilutes a lot when it's fused, but I just sort of want them. I don't need it to be really rich, but I do want some feeling of colour in the piece. Although these pieces, I am looking for them to be a bit muted. 
Um, but you'll see in, in the mountains here, there's this void here, and I'm particularly keen for that to be green. And I want that to be quite a bright green, so I'm going to use a spring green. Uh, I've used light sky blue, um, and although I should know, I don't think light sky, sky blue and spring green react too much. I think they may react a bit, but I'm hoping they won't react too much with each other. But also, the most of the join will be behind the wire wool, so I'm hoping that won't affect the project so much. Um, I can never do one layer of colour, so I am going to add, I've got a bit of pea pod here, just to add a bit of pea pod in the foreground. So otherwise I feel it's a bit one dimensional and just one colour. And then, as always, a bit of light adventuring because I like a bit of sparkle. Just dotted around. Now I'm going to put my wool on, hoping that I can get it. And then I'm going to have to touch up. Oop. the blue so that it's like like that and then I want to add a bit of because I feel it's a sort of good Welsh weather you see my my father's Welsh so I have an affinity with Wales um, And this is midnight blue, which is a dark, I sort of feel like darkening skies, rather like I did on the last one. So it's sort of similar skies. Now, I need to put my spaces on to make sure that the... Now, these spaces are going to move the, the powders a little bit, because we're only tack using, I'm hoping they're not going to move them a lot. Well, I certainly don't want one in the middle of there. And that would show... And I just put it exactly back where I put it before. Right. Take a little bit more. Harder. There we go. There we go. I don't have the steadiest hands, guys. That's why I don't do very delicate work. Okay, so the top piece can go on. Make sure your glass is all nice and clean when you're doing things like this. Now I'm going to put some sheet on the hillside. I'm going to glue this on and then slide it over this. Because what's a Welsh hillside without a few sheep? mistletoe um, leaves that I really like using as these kind of um, plane trees with just a stringer as a trunk. Um, I'm also going to add a little black sheep. And I've got the black sheep with the family um, on there. We've got some little mini flowers and then I'm going to add some fuchsia, um, just fine frit to add another dot of colour. I also feel it's a slightly a bit like um, heather, which you kind of get on um, places that's nice a bit of heather and then I'm just going to use um, some slightly thicker um, this is sort of the medium olive green just to add a bit of um, texture as well and then there, there that is and ready to go in the kiln and we can see how they come out after they've been tack fused so here are these out of the kiln. Um, I think the trees work really well. There's a kind of weird thing that you get like a, um, a pocket of air where the metal is, which I think is kind of nice because it gives a sort of 3D effect to the glass. Um, I think once they're on the stand, they'll look like a really pretty piece. 
Um, you can see the the um, the because the light tack fuse and a little bit of glass has left the kind of corners up. But I don't mind that. I think that's kind of part of the piece. Um, same with this. It looks good. Um, so those can. Well, I'll have to grind the bottom to get a flat edge. To, so I can glue it onto there. Um, if you don't want to grind the bottom, you can always not have the stand and just slump it. Um, so these two, I did a rookie error. I forgot, of course, when you put a, a square of glass over powder, the glass is going to dilute the powder. And so then you've got this sort of squares where the powder has pushed, the, the square of glass has pushed the powder away. Um, I don't know, maybe you don't need the squares. Maybe try it without the squares. Um, because we're only going for attack fuse, maybe it doesn't matter about the air. You can see there's so much air still caught under these, um, which if you were going to a full fuse would cause problems and wants to come up through the glass, but on attack fuse, it's fine. Um, I also think that the wave, I maybe should have taken a bit more time teasing out, maybe having a little bit less wool in there. Um, it definitely could do with a bit more powder. I, it, I could refuse um, it now, but then these pieces are going to go very soft. And it's going to end up being a sort of very soft, soft um, um, uh, tack fuse. And already my fishes are looking a bit more like blobs than fishes. So <coughs> for me, I'm going to put these in the kiln now and slump them. Very slow firing schedule because of the different um, thicknesses all over and um, just, you know, it, it's more likely they could break. Um, and I think they're kind of nice. I think I probably could sell them for a little bit of money because they're, you know, fun and uh, fun little um, pieces, even with the fact that we've got these sort of weird squares um, at the top um, and, you know, not quite so much colour in the sea and sky as I'd like in this one. Um, so I'm going to put these on to slump. We'll grind these and get them glued and we can have a look at them all when they're done. So here they are already in slumps and in, on their stands. Um, we just ground the edge of these and glued them just using the two-part glue we use uh, onto the stand. I think they've become as like a really pretty item. And, you know, it's pretty cheap. It's a fumarini, a bit of uh, wire wool and some frit and the, the glass. And you've got this kind of really cute... Um, easily sellable item. Um, I love these as well. I know that the, we've got the cubes at the top, but I still think they're kind of fun, nice pieces. Um, I sort of also like them the fact that you can get the light comes from behind, so when they're on a shelf, there's a sort of translucentness to them, which was really great and works really well. I just think this has got a lot of, um, lots of um, possibilities, this. Um, you can also, it's really hard to see on the camera, but there is a kind of a pocket of air trapped with the metal. And that's got a kind of metallic sheen to it, which is really pretty. Now, guys, I to say I tried this on a full fuse and I just ended up with like bubbles you wouldn't believe coming through the glass. And I fired it again, I fired it again. To get all the air out was really impossible. So I wouldn't suggest you do this on a full fuse unless you're willing to kind of fire it multiple times to get rid of all the bubbles, popping them, filling them with frit and all of that kind of thing. So that's just my only warning about this technique because it's definitely a tack fuse. Um, number. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing what kind of, you know, what you can use with this wild wool and what you can make it into and um, how you take it and take this idea and make it your own. And if you've liked this video, the uh, button will be to, uh, underneath so you can subscribe. And please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see when a new video is posted.